So we're going to look at how to create a simple digital escape room scene using a web tool called Genially. Um, you can set up an account for free uh, and there's lots of different things you can do with Genially. Um, but today what we're going to look at is how to create an interactive image. Okay, so this will be a uh, a simple image scene uh, where we will hide um, clues and objects um, and puzzles for our students to solve. So interactive image is the one you you need. Click on create and then you can either upload an image of your own from your computer. You can insert an image that's uh, uploaded online by pasting the URL or you can search for an image using Unsplash. Um, the images are on Unsplash are all free to use. Um, so let's say for example we wanted some kind of room. Um, here I can search for something that would be suitable as a background for my escape room scene. Let's try this one. And there we have our room and you can see these buttons here uh, can be turned into um, clues or objects. So for example, this one here, uh, I'm going to use this one as the intro. So I'm going to replace it with a different icon. Um, I'm going to choose the eye for information and then this finger button here is the one that you're going to use to link to whatever content uh, it should lead to. So the types of um, content that you can include are a tooltip, which is a short piece of text that will appear when you hover over it with your mouse, a window, which opens a new window, um, or a link to a website. Now we're going to choose a tooltip because we're just going to type in a short amount of text um, and we're just going to include a short instruction like search the room for clues. Okay, so this one's now here. Um, now, here's another one that we could use. So I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to insert a win uh, no a tooltip again, okay. But this time I'm going to insert an image. So this is a toolbar similar to in any wood processing um, program. Uh, I'm going to click on the image icon to insert an image, and I'm just going to choose one from my computer. For example, this playing card here. Uh, this will be a clue and I can also add some text so for example here if I wanted to put clue one so that the students know what uh, which clue it is I can make that bigger or change the font uh, let's make it a little bit bigger I can make it bold etc okay um, So these uh, clues here can be seen in the image, okay? I can move them, I can put them somewhere else if I want them. Students are going to see these, but we can also add invisible objects to our scene. You'll see here the options. So these ones are buttons, okay? What we have at the moment are buttons. We can also have buttons with text. We can have markers, uh, we can have numbers, etc. But this is the interesting one for me, invisible area. So what you do is you place this, you drag this over to your picture and then you can resize it. So let's say, for example, I want this uh, to be the picture and the clue is actually the picture. So I'm going to resize it uh, to make it the same size as the picture, more or less. And then I'm going to click on the figure icon and then add 
um, another clue, for example, uh, another tool tip. And then I could write a question, for example, I don't know, who painted um, the Mona Lisa? And I'm going to include a, an image of the Mona Lisa. Okay, and if I want to put somewhere that this is puzzle number two. Puzzle two. Okay, so there we have it. Um, and now you can see here that this is invisible. Nobody can see it. So you, the students have to search the image with their cursor um, rather than um, seeing them as, as you can see here. So we're going to uh, preview this now uh, with the eye at the top. This is what it will look like. So you can see here, we hover, search the room for clues. Here, this one comes up. Um, it's not in full screen, so it, um, it's looking rather large. Um, and then this one is hidden. Now, because we've added it as a, um, a tip rather than a window, uh, when we hover, it automatically appears. If you don't want it to appear automatically, then you can use um, a window instead. Let's go back to the editing scene. Um, so I can change this if I want to, to a window. And then if we preview it again, when I hover, nothing happens. But I can see uh, the hand sign. Okay, so it changes from a cursor to a hand sign. So students will know that there's something there, but they won't know exactly what it is until they click on it. So they click, and then the window appears like this. Okay, so this is basically what you can do. Uh, you can add all sorts of hidden items in your scene. So once you have all your clues and puzzles in your scene, um, you will need to uh, insert some kind of uh, locked box that they can open to escape the scene, escape the room. So, for example, here we've uh, included a picture of a locked box. Have you got all four answers? If so, click on the button. And then I'm going to insert a button here. Um, this one. I'm going to insert this button just right next to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a link to my um, locked box. So I've created a locked box with Google Forms. We will look at how to do this uh, in week four. But uh, just so that you can see how to include the link, I'm pasting in the link, opening a new tab, and, and that's it. Okay, so we're going to preview it again. And you'll see that here, once they click here, they see the clue and the button. If they click on the button, it will take them to the, the place where they have to key in the code to escape the room. Uh, that's basically how you create uh, an interactive um, escape room using uh, a genially interactive image.